And like I said, we need to be sure and mute that so it doesn't double echo. We're almost there. Our mute is engaged. No, and we'll start the recording so we can rebroadcast at a later time. There, that is engaged. Change up our screen view. And I'll bring up, let's see. First, we need to say the official good morning and welcome to everybody who is joining us at Donovan and Rosedale United Methodist Parish in central Nebraska. Uh, we're glad you joined us. And it is our goal to have this worship be a blessing to you and your household. We'll round up our morning bulletin so that folks can follow along with the prayers and the words to the songs. Here is the call to worship. Sing praises to the Lord, O faithful ones, and give thanks to God's holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. And then it is 4th of July weekend, and so it makes sense to uh, bring up some of our songs that celebrate um, our heritage as a nation and also hopefully as a spiritual people. So mine eyes have seen the glory. We have verse 1, verse 4, and then we have the summer camp verse, the key of the Savior. So be sure and follow that. So here we go. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling the guilty trap, rents of wrath and stone. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible special. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching in the beauty of the lily's heart, was born across the sea, with the glory in his bosom, and to be sure and he, as he died to make men holy, the son to make men free, all God is marching Scoot up our special verse, the alternate verse. Here we go. He's a peach of the same, and he's the apple of my eye. He bears fruit in season, and his love will never die. He prunes back the branches when branches get too hard, and that's when the man is for the Lord. Glory, glory, hell. Oops, I sang that wrong. We'll repre we will recover that last phrase. And that's why the man man is well, to is human, forgive is divine. So hopefully that's my mulligan for this morning. We'll see if we can get around the course without any more mulligans. Let's go ahead and join together in our unison prayer. As the family of faith, thank you, God, for the one who fulfills the law of your love, Jesus Christ. We confess to drifting apart from your love and the good it is meant to do. As we bear our burdens for Christ, Help us always remember, Jesus first carried the burden of the cross on our behalf. As he carried his load, 
He has made our yoke easier, our burden lighter. In Jesus' name, amen. Then we bring up our scripture. We're looking at Galatians chapter 6, uh, the first 10 verses. Paul's advising the early Christian church about um, how to lift one another up, how to help each other with their uh, burdens in life. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who receive the Spirit should restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work, then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must bear their own burdens. For those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. Speaking of load-bearing members leads me to think about great monuments of architecture. The one that really stands out in my mind is the St. Louis Gateway Arch. That's the arch behind me. It stands 650 feet tall, and it is 630 feet from one leg to the other. The arch rises up from the waterfront by the Great Mississippi River, the same river of Mark Twain's childhood. It appears to be a monument of grace and beauty. It looks like it does not weigh that much, but the arch was a load of work. The planning and fundraising for the arch took 30 years, from 1933 to 1963. They had to clear a half mile of waterfront, taking down old warehouses. They had to move the Missouri Pacific Railroad tracks to an underground tunnel. Once they were ready, it only took 20 months to build the arch from 1963 to 1965. Again, the arch is quite a load. It weighs 42,878 tons. The weight of the cement anchors is 25,980 tons of cement. The arch at the time of construction weighed more than the battleship Missouri. The arch is not one continuous line of girders. It is rather a series of triangles. These triangles were stacked together like a spinal column. Each triangle was 12 feet tall, and it took 142 triangles to get to the top, 71 triangles on each side. These triangles were made on the ground and hoisted by crane up to the top. In the picture over my shoulder, you can see the cranes. The triangles were laced together by 252 steel rods called tension bars. Cement was poured into the hollow walls of the triangle, and this would bond around the tension bars. Each triangle supports its neighbor. The arch is a beautiful symbol of the gateway to the Western United States. Behind this beauty is a heavy backbone of cement and steel. The arch is full of load-bearing members, just like the church is full of load-bearing members. We support one another. Thinking of load-bearing members, we remember what Jesus said about bearing loads. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. On the one hand, Jesus' yoke would be the kind he made as a carpenter. A well-made oxen yoke helps the animal pull many times its weight. On the other hand, Jesus' yoke is a spiritual yoke. This yoke is not made out of wood. It is made out of things like faith, hope, and love. When we have burdens to carry in life, we have faith to say our prayers in the morning, we have hope to lead us through the day, and loving one another is what takes us to the sunset. Jesus does not lift all the load for us. He gives us spiritual tool, tools to bear our own burdens. Paul has his observations to make about bearing one another's burdens. Paul's words are consistent with Jesus' words. Paul says when we bear one another's burdens, we are fulfilling the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? 
love God, love neighbor, love self. Paul is writing to the church about how to be the church together. Paul says, bear one another's burdens. This is all about the loving neighbor part. We pray together in worship. We pray for one another in worship. And we pray our own silent personal prayers in worship. When we go home, we continue to do the praying to God and for each other and for ourselves. This sounds really simple, and it is. This is one reason why Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The prayer power is the faith power. The prayer power is the lifting power. It is a simple formula for living in a complex world. Looking at the St. Louis Gateway Arch is a physical example of load-bearing members. The people of St. Louis wanted to build a beautiful reminder of their history as the Gateway City. The people of Jesus Christ are also building a beautiful thing as the children of God. The beautiful thing is the Church of Jesus Christ. Yes, the Church has built many beautiful buildings all around the world. Many of these buildings contain beautiful arches that support tons of wood and steel and stone. But within these churches, we are also building spiritual arches for one another. Think about our hands when we put them together in prayer. We create an arch. Think about it. The arms apart are the legs of the arch. The hands together at the top, they complete the spiritual arch. Support. These arch supports do not just reach for the sky in St. Louis, Missouri. They reach all the way up to God. Just this week, our hands have supported parents, grandparents, and children. We have prayed for 90-year-olds, 60-year-olds, and a three-year-old. We have been building the body of Christ. We have been Jesus' load-bearing members. We have been one another's spiritual arch supports. Amen. Let us continue our worship by bowing in prayer. Thank you, God, for sending our support system to us. In Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and who gave us the spiritual yoke of faith, hope, and love. We also thank you for the blessing of the Holy Spirit that supports and sustains us uh, day in and day out. We pray that your Holy Spirit is assisting each one of us to carry our loads. And when we need to lend a hand to one another as we fulfill the law of Christ's love, uh, may the Spirit give us the strength that we need to help bear one another's burdens. So it is, we have gathered together as your house of prayer, building these spiritual arches with our hands. And so as we folded our hands together, making our spiritual arches today, we most definitely offer these prayers in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And again, it, it is time to uh, put all of our hands together. Let's make these spiritual arches right now as we enter into our silent personal prayer time. So let's, let's ask God to help us bear our burdens and also to help us bear the loads of our, of our friends and neighbors. Let us be in silent prayer together. I invite us now to join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So we'll take that time. I'm changing uh, my screen into gallery mode so that we can be extending greetings, offering uh, signs of welcome to one another during our offering time. And uh, so I'll start with a heartfelt wave. And because it is Independence Weekend, I made sure to have my American flag symbol ready as part of saying thanks for um, 
the, the nation that is our home. So thank you everybody for those expressions. Yep, I'm seeing other flags and coffee mugs and somebody's tossing the confetti. Maybe somebody, Jody found the fireworks. Yep, there's fireworks way down there somewhere. So they're the kind that won't burn the house down. So there we go. We've got some excellent, excellent offerings of greetings there. Thank you, folks. Then what I'll do is I'll, oh, we found another celebratory. Jane, thanks. You betcha. So I'm going to go ahead and, and shift our, our viewpoint again. Uh, this is our first Sunday of the month, so it's Communion Sunday. And so I'll just bring up um, our prayers. And uh, if you have communion packs at home, that's great. If you have a little juice and bread at home, but uh, crackers and water, bread and water. So that's been the bishop's advisory for my communion. So we, we begin with um, our communion prayers. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. From the hand of the one who taught us to pray for our daily bread, Jesus Christ offers us the bread of life from the cup of the carpenter who promised us living water. We receive spiritual drink for the thirst of our souls. Holy, holy, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a sharing in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a sharing in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in you with Christ on for us. And we proclaim, the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. So the body of Christ broken for us. Take and eat in remembrance of him. And the blood of Christ shed for us. Drink this also in remembrance of him. Now let us bow together for our prayer after receiving. Thank you again for sending Jesus Christ, who invited us to be his body in the world. His body is the church today. So we do pray that through this spiritual meal, the words of Christ come alive in us by the power of the Holy Spirit, so that we can indeed uh, be the body of Christ at work in his world. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Thank you for breaking spiritual bread. I'm going to locate our bulletin because we want to round up our words for our ascending song. So there we go. We have, I better enlarge that just a little. A kind of small day. So America the Beautiful. We have the, the three verses. This was written by the school teacher, Catherine Lee Bates, when she was on a teacher's convention in Colorado Springs. She just uh, got really fired up uh, about the beauty of the mountains and that inspired this song. We're looking at the Boulder Flatirons. I have to confess that's not Pike's Peak, um, but uh, that's definitely Colorado. That's the same mountains that inspired this song. Oh, beautiful, 
those precious skies For amber with a prayer For purple mountain majesty Above the country America, America God shed his grace on me and primary with all from sea to shining sea. Oh, beautiful for he was great in liberty strive in more and south of country land and receive all America, America, make a bright holy fire till all success be noblest and every good divine. Oh, beautiful for faithfully that sees beyond the sea. So we have arrived at our benediction. Uh, and after the benediction, uh, for those that wish to stay around for sharing of joys and concerns, we'll have a few informal moments uh, after we bow out of the YouTube link. Um, so let's uh, bow now in prayer. Thank you, God, for abiding with us. And we pray that as your people and with all the peoples and nations of the world, more and more we will draw closer to Jesus Christ and further and further away from the things that divide us and hurt us. We do pray that the Holy Spirit brings the peace that passes all understanding to all of our hearts and minds. In Jesus Christ, amen. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining in this morning. I'll go back to our... Uh, gallery view, and we'll go ahead and uh, say farewell to those who joined us on the YouTube link. So we'll uh, pause and bow out of the live stream. So we'll say an adios to everybody that was over on the YouTube channel. God be with you till we meet again.